Hey, so this is probably one of the keyboards I am most excited about this year. I'm all for bigger brands stepping into the custom mechanical keyboard world, dropping the price for fully featured boards, and that's what I believe Keychron did with their first custom mech, the Q1. We're talking about a 75% mechanical keyboard that packs a lot of value. Gasket mount, south facing 5 pin hot swap switch sockets, VIA support, CNC full aluminum body, and more. You can get it barebone and add your own switches and keycaps, or as a kit for $20 more, where you get Gatteron Phantom switches and double shot keycaps that are pretty solid. But does it sound great? Well, let's have a closer look. So in the box, you get keycap and switch pullers, then the keyboard in a foam tray, but also a coiled cable with aviator connectors, additional screws, replacement keycaps for Mac and Windows, and additional foam strips for the gasket mount system. I was surprised to see a coiled cable included, the braiding is the same as most included cables, no tech flex, but it's still cool that it has an aviator connector. Keychron also included their wooden wrist rests, additional PBT double shot keycap sets, and a bunch of Gateron Phantom switches. Pretty cool. So let's start with the keycaps, as I'll replace them with another set right after. These come with the fully assembled kit, for $20 more than the barebone variant, you get these plus switches, which I find a very good deal, especially for starters. These keycaps are better in pretty much every way than Keychron's usual keycaps. They're ABS, but double shot and OEM profile, and the quality is really good considering the extra cost. What I particularly like is that they went with the same font they use on their other sets, and it really sets them apart from other budget keycaps. Also, the double shot quality is overall very nice and quite precise. Alright, let's see what this keyboard is made of. So I started by undoing the screws that hold the case together. There's eight of them and they're all located under the case. After that, the bottom of the case comes off. I then detach the ribbon cable from the daughter board. It's a bit tricky as you have to slide the black section, but then the ribbon can be pulled out. The plate assembly was still kind of stuck as I had to remove the keycaps on the F row. After that, it came off easily. Taking a closer look at the daughter board, it features a USB-C port and also houses the switch to toggle between the Windows and Mac layouts. We can also see the gaskets, which are made from a really nice kind of foam. It bounces back slowly and provides a really nice flex even when fully assembled. We can also see how the badge is attached, so it's screwed from the inside, but can also be removed to allow for a switch to be used instead. Looking under the PCB, we can see the hot swap switch sockets from Gateron. Pre-installed were Gateron Phantom Browns, but I'll swap them for reds instead. It's worth noting that these switches seem to be lubed the same way cap switches are, so they spill a bit of oil on the plate. A bit annoying, but not really a problem. The sockets are south-facing and accommodate 5-pin switches, which is nice to see. And finally, if we remove all screws that hold this assembly in place, we can see that this keyboard comes with plate foam that's perfectly cut, and the plate itself has standoffs where the screws go. The stabilizers are screw-in and they're made by Gateron. First time I'm seeing these. They're factory lubed, but only on the wire and it's a bit messy. They didn't sound super great as is, so I decided to lube them myself with some GS2 for the housings and dielectric grease on the wire, and it did help a bit. Not as great as the Rock V2s, but pretty good still. I reassembled the whole thing, but then noticed that the plate flexed quite a bit more in the middle, so I decided to add additional gaskets, but only under the plate, to see how it would feel. It made the sides maybe a bit too stiff, so I would recommend to add strips only at the top and bottom, not on the sides. To finish this build, I decided to go with Gateron Phantom Reds, so these are linears with similar specs to typical reds, but they're factory lubed and they're indeed smoother than stock switches. Their color is quite vibrant, not the best match with my custom blue badge, but I'm definitely not installing blues in there. Finally, I went with a white on black EPBT keycap sets that I had on hand. And here we go, definitely a better suited keycap set with this custom badge. Now that we looked at the insides, let's step back a bit and have a look at the assembled board. The case is fully aluminum and the keyboard weights approximately 1598 grams, a little less than the GMMK Pro at 1654 grams. The finish is impeccable on my unit, no scratches, dents, no nothing. The surface is smooth all around and the edges are rounded evenly. I also like that the keyboard has no branding at all. It can be nice in some cases, but I prefer nothing over a huge logo or something like that. Now that we're having a look at the bottom, we can see that the feet are very simple. Just four clear rubberized dots. So no angle adjustment on this board. 
At the back, near the left, you'll find a USB-C port and a switch to alternate between the Mac and Windows layout. This keyboard is wired only, in comparison with most other keyboards from Keychron, which usually support Bluetooth. Final noteworthy feature, this keyboard uses a gasket mount system for the plate assembly, and the gaskets do work. This keyboard has a considerable amount of flex. With the daughter board in place, the plate assembly can move freely without affecting the USB cutout, and I was happily surprised, as that wasn't really the case with the GMMK Pro, but this one works for sure. Okay, now onto the switches. As I mentioned earlier, you can get this keyboard barebone, but if you go with the fully assembled variant, it comes with Gateron Phantom switches. They're your typical blue, brown, and red switches, but for these, Keychron worked with Gateron. First notable difference is that the housing's color matches the stem, which is kind of cool, but it will affect the RGB color, if you care about that. Browns are truly brown with these Phantom switches. But what is actually better with these is that they're factory lubricated and they wobble a bit less than basic Gatorons. Pretty cool overall, I think the best switches out of the bunch are the reds, they're quite smooth, not as much as manually lube switches or even the rocks, but better than dry switches. The lube is super light, so while it helps, it doesn't glide as freely in my view. Browns are not super tactile, as expected, and blues, well, they click, which I don't particularly enjoy. But if you want better browns or blues, then you could consider them for sure. They remind me a lot of Gateron cap switches, they leak oil the same way these did, so if you were considering cap switches, getting a pre-built Q1 with these is actually a pretty solid value, I believe, given the small additional cost. So not only this keyboard comes with unusual Gateron switches, but we also have factory lubed screw-in stabs from Gateron. Out of the box, they weren't the best, however, after some tuning, they were quite okay. My spacebar still needs some additional work, but all other keys sound great to me, and I think they're better than the GOAT stabs on the GMMK Pro. Okay, enough rambling, I'm leaving you with a sound test comparison between this Q1 out of the box with no mod, the build I ended up with, and my GMMK Pro build as well. So, one thing that's very noticeable is the hollowness of the case. While the keyboard feels nice to type on, it sounds a bit like a stock tofu. It does sort of make sense, given the empty space to allow for the flex, and filling it with additional foam will definitely help, but will also affect the flexiness of the board. I will try modding it in the future, hopefully I can make it sound a little more full. So now that we've introduced the GMMK Pro in the picture, might as well compare these two boards. They're super similar in specs, and visually too. Listing everything they have in common would take a while, so let's see what is different between the two. 
So the GMMK Pro has a rotary knob where the Q1 has room for another key or a badge. The USB port on the GMMK Pro is centered while the Q1 has it to its left. The Q1 comes in three colors, while the GMMK Pro only has two at the moment. And finally, the GMMK Pro sort of has a dead sound, really muted, while the Q1 sounds quite hollow out of the box. Now, in terms of pros and cons, the GMMK Pro has side lights, while the Q1 only has per switch LEDs, and it currently offers a wider variety of custom parts, such as different plate materials, although Keychron are working on that as well. On the other hand, the Q1 supports QMK and VIA today, while the GMMK Pro did not at launch. It does now, I believe, but requires flashing the keyboard. It also comes with a pretty cool coil cable with an aviator connector, while the GMMK Pro doesn't. Its gaskets actually work, the Q1 can flex, while the GMMK Pro doesn't really. And finally, it's cheaper both as a barebone and assembled kit. One is not clearly better than the other, I would say. It really depends on what you value more in the end. Now to the RGB LEDs, they can be changed with the layer 1 key paired with the QWERTY and ASDF area. In fact, the controls can be changed in VIA, so that's pretty cool. There's a bunch of preset animations, you can change the hue, brightness and speed and it works well overall. But with these red switches, any color looks kind of bad apart from red or white. And I don't really like red LEDs, so I think I will leave them off in my case. But still, it's there and it works as expected. Okay, finally, let's have a look at VIA support. I was happily surprised to see that VIA worked out of the box. You can pretty much change all keys to what you want, as well as on multiple layers. I don't find this as useful on a 75% keyboard, but customizability is always nice. Plus, you get to rearrange the rightmost column, depending on which keycaps you have that can fit there. As for the Win and Mac switch, I believe it only switches the Windows key with the Alt key, depending on the setting, and it doesn't seem to affect VIA in any way. So, what's up with this keyboard? I think it's pretty awesome. It lowers the price for big brand premium keyboards again, like Glorious did earlier this year. The big downside is the hollowness of the sound, but I'm confident that the community will find ways to improve it, and the fact that you can get a true gasket mount full aluminum keyboard with a 75% layout for around $150, to me sounds like a really solid deal. Other gasket mount keyboards around that price are all plastic usually, so again, I'm impressed. I'll have a link down below to this keyboard, as well as all the other accessories that Keychron sent my way alongside the Q1. Anyway, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you leave a like if you did. And as always, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, as I'll see you in the next video.